a very warm welcome on news line media verse and you are watching on point with kartike in today's edition of on point we are going to talk about manipur and a letter shot up by bjp mla rajkumar emo singh which has stirred a controversy he has shot up a letter to home minister amit shah requesting fencing of the entire mizoram border emo singh said that since mizoram has declined to do biometrics to detect illegal migrants which mizoram says they are refugees the demography of the entire region can change Mizoram on the other hand though ran a very successful project to test biometrics has refused to go ahead with it the biometrics of the illegal migrants which Mizoram calls refugees there are 60000 Myanmaris who are in Mizoram more than 5 to 6000 cookies have fled they are in Mizoram now the Mizoram government has decided and i quote The Mizoram Minister of Information and Public Relations, Laru Kima, told the Indian Express newspaper that the state has not collected the biometric data of any immigrant till date, and they have decided not to do so on humanitarian grounds. He placed the number of refugees in the state from Myanmar and Chittagong Hill Tract in Bangladesh around sixty uh, thousand. Mizoram has a five hundred and ten kilometer border. And it, and he said, since the Myanmar military coup of two zero two one, around sixty thousand Myanmaris have taken refugees in the state. Mizoram has provided them relief. He says, the Ministry of Home Affairs, in a letter to the state government, had ordered for biometrics and biographic samples of Myanmar and Bangladeshi refugees to be collected. He says this can lead to various issues as India is not signatory to UN Refugee Convention. Such profiling of our brothers and sisters is not required, and that the state government won't take up such discriminatory exercise. lot of analysts believe that this is happening because of the coming assembly elections in the state and the question i ask is just because assembly elections are around the corner can security decision on security issues be set aside for 60 days or 90 days or 35 days so that's a very important issue why this decision is not being taken when a successful pilot project ran And let me tell you on this issue. I'm joined by Professor Arunam Bhagat, Concurrent Faculty, Special Centre for Study of Northeast India; Dr. Thangalal Hauke, Assistant Professor, Centre for Study of Law and Governance; Swas Chakma, Director, Rights and Risk Analysis Group. So there are two things. Though the decision not to go ahead is more than 72 hours old, but the fact is that Emo Singh has shot off a letter stating the same thing that since the biometrics is not done. the border should be fenced we know that the border is very it's it's a difficult issue but let me straight away go to uh, professor bhagat professor bhagat do you think that elections are you know taking a better of a security uh, issue in mizoram and uh, yes unfortunately yes this is what i have also told you uh, in one of the previous discussion uh, that somewhere the identity politics seems to have taken over and this identity politics is a very big uh, it plays a big role in the electoral politics subsequently and mizoram uh, going to polls most likely by the end of this year though it has not been declared yet by the election commission the dates but uh, chief minister is hoping joram thanga is hoping that through this identity politics of Uh, talking about a larger mizo confederation and a greater mizoram uh, perhaps it will fetch him uh, once again a majority vote so that he can continue for the second term next term as well but uh, unfortunately in this process of identity politics and also the electoral politics uh, the entire security issue so and national security has been taken a back seat and that is the most unfortunate uh matter that is being witnessed now okay uh, brijesh tell me you know is it because of the fact that the ethnic stock is same and you know the chief minister feels that you know this decision can be taken little later in the day you know elections are around the corner it's like you know often certain decisions are deferred when elections are around the corner through the india so mizoram is also reflecting that reality well yes uh, mizoram is also reflecting that reality because you know kartike uh, though i have always of been opinion that you know that a humanitarian approach has to be taken uh, when it comes to refugee because nobody uh, willingly and out of his own volition uh, would want to leave his own motherland uh, 
uh, but the fact is that you know that the other country is also uh, has to take its own uh, security risks and analyze it and then act according to it uh, so the biometrics is one issue which could have easily been done uh, by the government but i think i i agree with uh, uh, professor oinam bhagat that since elections are out the corner and these already uh, you know uh, zoram thanga has acquired this image of uh, uh, you know as a champion for uh, cookiezo and mizos people uh, as far as uh, this uh, five month uh, conflict which has been going on uh, between the cookies and the maithis so i think he is just uh, you know living up to that reputation to ensure that you know it yields uh, electoral dividends for him you know in 2018 interestingly an extra ethnic issue came to the forefront stridently for the first time just before the election and the widespread protests were held over inclusion in the electoral rolls of some of the brews who were originally from mizoram and settled in supra since 90s brews are not regarded as ethnic mizos so you know it's not just limited it's not just limited to a uh, cookie zo thing but the larger issue here is that how politics and how manipur is having an impact on the electoral scenario of mizoram now let me get in swas chakma swas ji how, how do you see this uh, development in which now the letter has gone to the home minister saying the fencing should take place the biometrics is not happening one party is calling them illegal immigrants the other party refuses the word refugee and both of them connotes two different things well i think it's a natural reaction of the state of mizoram because it has nothing to do with the upcoming elections even when the chill refugees had come in 1990 onwards after the crackdown uh, in myanmar from that time they have been accommodating them now what is the policy of the government of india of all the state governments towards refugees illegal immigrants whatever you call it? is his preference by ethnicity it is preference by religious uh, belief so if you look at the government of india they are never going to do biometric identification of the tibetan refugees tamil refugees you know hindus who have fled from afghanistan sikhs who have fled from afghanistan if you are not going to do biometric identification why should government of mizoram do it now the, once again if you look at mizoram then they will say that the bruce do not belong to us so once again the issue of othering takes place so that's what i was saying from the beginning one of the reason why we do not have a, a security system where we believe that illegal immigrants come and threaten the security of this state you do not even have the basic policy to do the documentation collect the biometric data whatsoever and if tomorrow uh, if misram decides that we will not do it you can't do anything about it at the end of the day you have to leave it to the state authorities because law and order is a state subject so where is the policy of the central government the policy of the central government is the you know jo bhi aata hai it's always an ad hoc approach and i am sure if there were you know manipuris who are coming if they were living in bangladesh if manipur was you know i mean uh, sharing borders with bangladesh they would welcome them so in this country everybody welcomes his or our own community and mizoram is not an exception and what we lack in the entire country is there been a policy on naturalization immigration refugees there is nothing at the saddest parties in 1947 we saw the largest human the movement of human beings and from then on we had the tibetan refugees we had the indians being thrown out from myanmar in 1962 indians being thrown out from uganda tamil refugees then the tribal refugees from uh, bangladesh barma all the time refugees are coming in and after 75 years is do not even know how to deal with the refugees so it's a reflection uh, of the policy and it's basically telling this center that you know get your acts together and if center forces then mizoram will file an application in the high the supreme court saying why are you not doing it for the others you know other refugees hmm. very uh, you, uh, a very pointed answer mr hauke uh, do you feel that somehow this manipur issue has spilled over to mizoram your opening comments do you feel that uh, this is this is uh, this is having a cascading effect which is impinging also on the assembly elections because there are four assembly elections uh, dr aukep you know you have elections in madhya pradesh you have elections in uh, mizoram you have elections in rajasthan you have elections in chatisgarh so do you think that's going to impinge on them in this way 
After five years of uh, rule in Mizoram, it is widely reported that the MNF, the MNF has uh, a kind of poor performance uh, indicator. However, uh, the last two years, you know, the influx of refugees from uh, Myanmar, the Manipur issue has become a kind of rescue for the MNF, to my opinion, because, uh, you know, the MNF have been rekindling ties, uh, taking this situation into account, and, uh, you know, trying to help all these refugees uh, through the, the, you know, the relationship of uh, ethnic ties. And uh, they become the savior of the so-called Joe Natha or the Chin Kuki Mizo people, or whether it may be in Bangladesh, it may be in Myanmar or Manipur. They become the savior, and this party has become the savior of uh, those desperate, uh, you know, Kuki Chin Mizo groups in uh, this region. So uh, it's a kind of a boon to uh, the MNF, uh, you know, despite their poor performance in the last, uh, you know, five years, and. Uh, uh, regarding this biometric, I have uh, issues. Of course, uh, this is also shared by the Office of the United Nations High Commission for Human Rights. Uh, they have shared this concern that biometrics may lead to abuses, violation of human rights, and especially uh, in a government where uh, you know there is no sympathy or a government which is not sympathetic to minorities. This biomet biometric data they can become. Uh, you know, uh, a weapons, you know, in the, have, in the hands of this kind of government. So these are the concerns raised by uh, United Nations and many other academicians. And uh, of course, uh, the issue has been ethnicized. Uh, if you compare Mizoram, uh, Manipur and Nagaland, you know, there are recent reports that many Nagas from the other side of the border, from Myanmar has, uh, uh, you know, has migrated or have has sought refuge in Nagaland, but uh, this has not been uh, you know, politicized because on both sides of the border there are Nagas, whether they are in Myan they are Myanmaris or Indian, uh, their ethnic identity is Naga. So, so Doctor, not okay. So in a way, if I say if you know you have Nagas, they talk about Greater Nagaland. You know you have uh, a common ethnic stock. You have people talking about greater Mizoram. There is no political mobilization, but the people have written articles. You have people who are not politically influential, but they openly talk about it. Uh, isn't it bound to create anxiety? And I'm saying, quote unquote, quote unquote, indigenous communities. I think regarding this, uh, the the Kuki Chin uh, people in Manipur, you know, they have uh, they have participated in the MNF movement uh, in terms of you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, different contributions to this movement. And uh, they are not very much, uh, you know, uh, into having a movement uh, of, of course, there are, are you know, different views regarding this, but to my opinion, uh, there is no strong arts in the, uh, you know, in the past decades uh, about Greater Mizoram. But I think uh, in the last uh, few years, it came to light because uh, the kind of discriminative policies that, uh, the Manipur government has been, uh, you know, doing on uh, minorities. I think with uh, improvement in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of welfare institution and others, uh, you know, this kind of gaps can be bridged. But it is uh, dependent upon the, you know, the government of Manipur to look into these issues. Unless the the kind of divide that we have now in terms of institutions, in terms of development indicators are you know address i think uh, the the kuki chin uh, jomi mar uh, communities in manipur will still uh, you know they, they will be further driven into uh, the concept of jo you know uh, uh, community and uh, this would create a lot of problem to uh, to to the state of manipur so uh, we should have we should positively see uh, these developments and addressing you know these uh, issues politically as well as uh, you know, on different parameters uh, is uh, much needed. And we should think in terms of these rather than, you know, uh, looking this as a, a problem that could, uh, you know, that could divide the whole Nordicean region into further smaller states. So we have to look this uh, political issues in terms of economy, uh, in terms of uh, disparity in development, in terms of uh, many institutions that has been lacked. Because if you look into the kind of uh, you know, the kind of uh, camps that we have where 
uh, who have been uh, driven away from Imphal and other places are located. How okay. many deaths are there? So, uh, in the last, uh, in the last, uh, you know, two months, there are more than fifty deaths in, uh, you know, in a relief camps manned by Kuki, Hanglai, Lompi. So, look into the kinds of, uh, you know, uh, situations or the kind of relief camps they are leaving. The 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 funds from the central government, which was uh, handed to the uh, Manipur government, is not flowing. The kind of uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, camps they have, they are pathetic, and this has to be improved. Unless uh, Manipur government uh, divert the medical and other you know kind of relief materials to this, also the kind of anxiety, the kind of uh, you know divide that we have in Manipur will further. And we have to look, uh, you know, into all these issues practically, rather than uh, saying that, uh, you know, this, uh, this and that has been fueling. But you know, okay, okay, fair enough. Number of points, Doctor Hawkeep, you made. Let me read out the letter uh, of Rajkumar Emo Singh. I would like to state one more important issue regarding the detection of illegal migrants, which has been initiated by Home Ministry. We are pleased and thankful for the extension of the date for the detection of illegal migrants up to March 2024. However, there is an apprehension that people entering through the Mizoram side of the Myanmar border will not be properly checked as it was reported in the news of the Mizoram. Government has declined to do biometrics to detect illegal migrants from Myanmar. This is a very serious issue which would change the entire demography of region. Thus, I request you to ensure that the Indo-Myanmar border in Mizoram is fully fenced, which is similarly going to be done in Manipur to help in controlling infects of such illegal migrants across the region. So, is this anxiety uh, un unrealistic on part of the uh, indigenous community uh, in, uh, mm, I would say, uh, Manipur? Dr. Bhagat, and he says he has handed over the letter to the Home Ministry under Shri Amit Shah and also mailed a copy to initiate actions regarding the fur terrorings with the Manipur based organization abroad in Canada and other countries. So, are these un anxieties unjust? See, Kartike, uh, I would like to uh, look at this issue of what you called uh, refusal to biometrics and subsequently uh, a request by uh, MLA RK Imo Singh for fencing the entire uh, this Mizoram and the Manipur uh, boundary. Uh, the point is this, those who are a believer of ethnic identity and ethnic nationality, which I would say those who are demanding greater Nagaland as well as greater Mizoram, they are harping on the idea of ethnic nationalism. Uh, so, for them, increase in the population, whether it is a Kuki Jo uh, population, Mijo population, or in the Naga population, uh, is going to serve the purpose of electoral politics. Because this increase in the number subsequently will also expand over the territory. Because once you are, uh, you know, crowded in one place, you will like to subsequently spread out and the whole issue of you know greater nagalin or greater mizoram is primarily linked with increase in population side by side along with uh, what you call expanding the territorial boundary so you have to see this very closely so once you put a biometrics or put a full stop into the uh, migration illegal migration that is not going to serve the purpose of what you call ethnic identity politics. Uh, the fear largely comes with the Maites, uh, primarily because if you look at the composition of Manipur and its politics, the body politics, is that it is, it is a plural uh, state, a plural society. There are several ethnic communities, as many as 33, 34 communities of ethnic differences, and they coexist. So, a uh, sudden increase in the population of one community is going to affect the other because the population increase is also going to link with electoral politics. There will be voter one day and once you have a large number of voters, then your representation is also going to increase. So, that is the fear of the Nagas and the Maites when the Kuki Joe population increases in Manipur. 
Now, there is also cases where the uh, Chin people from Myanmar has sneaked into Mizoram. The government of Mizoram has tried its best to keep, you know, uh, camps separately for these illegal migrants, allowing them to come, but not giving them, uh, you know, Aadhaar card and so on. But still many have been successful in procuring illegally Aadhaar card and passport even. And there has been also cases where many of these illegal migrants were caught in Manipur coming from Mizoram uh, with what you call illegal documents, identity documents, citizenship documents. So this is a fear largely in Manipur that people who are coming illegally either from Nagaland or from Mizoram may sneak into Manipur and uh, the equilibrium that exists among different ethnic communities may get topsy-turvy, uh, you know, get uh, affecting into a democratic politics of representation. That is the reason, I believe, why the uh, R.K. Imo Singh has asked that the fencing has to be done if the government of Mizoram is refusing to go for biometrics. And last point, one more I would like to add, Kartike. In 2011 census, there has been lots of complaints that uh, in Senapati district, which is largely a Naga dominated areas, lots of population hype has been registered. And those who have uh, gone to the field, uh, I'm told were not allowed even to meet the, the people per se, but whatever the village chief says, these officials have to note it down, how many people in this village. So whatever the headman says, uh, they have to note it down without themselves going to the villages. So, and there is also cases where uh, electorate, a person is electorate in both places, both in Imphal Valley as well as in the hill districts. And there is no mechanism to check these double voters that each of these electorates are uh, trying to manipulate and enjoy. They will vote both in the hills as well in the valley. And there are several cases of this that has been found out. Perhaps biometrics could be one means to check this illegal activity of, you know, uh, casting two votes by one individual. And this is very commonly seen in Manipur. I cannot say about Mizoram per se, but in, in Manipur, this has been largely the case. Those Nagas and Kukis who have their houses in the hills and also in the valley, they uh, have two electoral, you know, what you call identity. Uh, so that needs to be really checked out. So the issue of biometrics, Kartike, has both the plus and the negative uh, plus point as well as the negative points. But we have to see that how many of the illegal activities that is going on must be checked. Because once you are hyping up the number of population against the actual number, then next step is the demand by these communities for delimitation. So when you have, say, for instance, only 15 lakhs voter, so but in the paper it is 20 lakhs, then the excess of 5 lakhs will result in the question of delimitations. And those who are manipulating are going to be the beneficiary. So this is also one fear that certain sections of the uh, uh, communities in Manipur are uh, uh, preferring the biometrics to be brought in. Uh, Mr. Chakma, you know, there are 60,000 refugees there. And uh, though they are in the camps, the further profiling is not taking place. And the word which have been reported in newspaper is uh, the biometric and biographic profiling uh, of our brethren from Myanmar and Bangladesh is the first step of the process of deportation as their country has not stabilized. It would be a violation of human rights to deport them before this peace in the respective countries. Mr. Home Secretary H. Lan Lalin Gamwaya said, I hope I have pronounced his name well. Basic issue is that the argument is, a, argument is a, a, around ethnicity. It's not about citizenship uh, of the state. The, the way we 
address the issue of Manipur. So, you know, you have you have ethnicity as the dominant profile in the state. Well, it is. I mean, that is why I said, you know, I mean, the approach which the Mizos have towards the Chin refugees from Myanmar is not the same as with respect to the Bruce who actually came from neighboring state of Tripura and the areas where the uh, the Bruce we are residing as per the reports of the government of Mizoram, the census report of 2011, that you know, they have been living there from 1600 AD. So what I was trying to say is actually everybody is racist, everybody is ethnocentric, everybody is religious fanatic. And so that is why if you look at the letter That's of That's not Rajkumar, very, these are not the, the, the kindest of words I've heard since morning. Racist. No, no, absolutely. See, no, we in the Northeast, we do not accept. When we come out of the country, the, the region, when we come to the mainland India, we always say Northeast, Northeast. But we always forget the other side that we are, including us. There is no community. I mean, equally can be racist, and we are. So I'm just being, you know, I mean, uh, frank on that. So that is what when, if you look at the reaction, the reaction of the Home Minister of, yeah, the Chief Minister of Mizoram, Mizoram government is ethnocentric because they prefer their own community. And if you look at the letter of Rajkumari Musi, it's exactly the same. So if you read his letter, he's saying that Burmese, Indo-Burma border from the Manipur side should be fenced along with, uh, for example, Manipur. He did not mention that there are two other states which share border with Myanmar, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. Are there no immigration or influx of population in these two places? In fact, when the Ministry of Home Affairs issued the direction in 2021 after the military junta had taken <coughs> over, the, Myan the, the Nagaland government said we are not going to do any kind of identification. It doesn't apply to us. They are people so that's it so that's what i'm what i'm trying to say is that uh, i don't think we have a clear policy with respect to uh, you know i mean mm, illegal immigration so our reaction is not policy centric that there should be a holistic solution so if today make us feel that you know there should not be any kind of influx it can change the board bank politics which is absolutely correct so they will only focus on the community which they are having fight with so it's the same for the Chakmas who face the same problem in, uh, for example, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, elsewhere. So Northeast at the end of the day is the land which has this kind of ethnic preferences. The unfortunate thing is actually the same practice in mainland India. Because if you are a Christian, if you come from Myanmar, you will not qualify as a under the Citizenship Amendment Act. If you are a Hindu from there, you will not qualify because the number of Hindus are less there. But look at the same situation. If you are from Afghanistan, if you are from Pakistan and Bangladesh, which are Muslim-dominated country, countries, you are welcome. You are certifying those countries as human rights violators, and you are welcome here. So why blame a particular state government? I mean, the policy of this But state you know, Swahas, been... you know, Swahas, the issue is the ethnic conflict in Manipur has created has brought ethnic politics uh, at center fold uh, in Mizoram. You see, let me draw the analogy and tell me if I'm wrong. The conflict in Manipur is ethnic. It's not a religious conflict. It's between cookies and maithis. They have issues Absolutely. there. One, okay. So it, cookies and maithis have an issue there. But if you look at if you look at what Mizoram uh, has done after 1986, when under the leadership of Rajiv Gandhi, Lal Denga Accord was signed. It was peaceful. The second election took place in 1989. And what were the issues? The issues were development or the lack of development, alleged corruption of those in power. And of course, the issue of Mizoram Liquor Prohibition Act 2019, which, uh, you know, has the support of uh, church in Mizoram. But today, after 1986, instead of developing other things, the community issue has become center to the Mizoram politics. So Manipur ethnic conflict has had a direct, uh, it's obviously the question is to you Mr. Chakma, is having a direct bearing and is getting accentuated uh, right before the assembly elections. No, it is not of today. It has always been there. The Chakmas in Mizoram, who are one of the largest minority groups, have always been targeted because they share the border with Bangladesh. So if you look at the history of Manipur, in 1986, it became a separate state. In 1995, they launched the 
uh, identification of the voters who are eligible or eligible voters, and thousands of chakmas we are. No, but the Bruce had a problem. The, uh, the history says no, the first no. time the Bruce had no, a problem. No, no. No, the Bruce had to leave then Chakmas because I myself was the complainant before the National Human Rights Commission. NHRC state the proceedings and etc. etc. So what I'm saying is this ethnocentrism in the Northeast is part of the, uh, you know, politics as much as religion is part of the, or caste-based politics is part of it in mainstream India. So in the Northeast, the ethnicity plays along with religion and in mainland India also, you know, religion and caste etc. play the uh, primary role. So, you know, I mean, if you so, see, therefore, this reaction is so, different. So, Mr. Chakma, this brings me to another question. Dr. Haukep, the conflict in Manipur, if I go by the assumption and the statements made by all of you, is fueling ethnocentric politics in the Northeast? I mean, so why should there have been any controversy about biometrics and our brothers and all that, you know? It becomes irrelevant when citizenship is plural in nature. So these issues become irrelevant. Definitely. Uh, currently, Manipur is under the guards of uh, blame game. For instance, uh, you know, uh, many of the minority groups, uh, particularly the Klukis, are blamed that their population has increased. But empirical evidence from the census of India uh, shows that in 100 years, from 1911 to uh, uh, 2011, uh, the cookie population increased by just 1.6%, which is not, uh, I have already shown in many mediums that this is not much. And uh, the blame always goes to the cookies, despite uh, there are many uh, transborder communities, for instance, the Tankus and others, who are also settling in the uh, Myanmar part of the, uh, you know, uh, country. And uh, there has been movements, you know, uh, being a notice. And uh, we have uh, not uh, talked about all these issues which academicians have you know studied and pointed out and it's not only the tankuls and the cookies also there are the maites also uh, who have been living in shilet for centuries and uh, there are many others in tripura as well as in barak valley and there are also uh, populations in uh, in myanmar so uh, you know all the three communities in manipur they are equally uh, you know facing this issue and the only uh, you know uh, yeah, stick to measure is use the constitution and other institutions to detect and deport, if possible, all those immigrants. If you, if you know there is an indication or if there is detection of those populations, uh, you know, we have I have been explaining in this in your TV show also about about uh, many issues like the increase in populations of uh, cookies in Jharkhand district, Chandil, uh, you know, and uh, Tirunopal without looking into the 1993 ethnic class between the Nagas and Kukis, where, you know, a large sum of the population from uh, Kuki population from Okurul, Sanapati, and uh, uh, Tamiangong has been transferred to uh, Kuki dominated districts. All this has not taken into account. And many blames uh, is put on the Kukis that uh, a few decades earlier uh, in the 80s, uh, they have hardly. Uh, six, seven MLS, but now they are having nine and ten MLS. It's because uh, their population has become, uh, you know, uh, concentrated and they can win in many of these, uh, you know, constituencies. So these hard facts are not taking into account and we uh, continue to blame the other group uh, for all problems uh, instead of looking holistically into what happened into all these populations uh, in Manipur as a whole. So these are the problems that we have. And I think at least academicians, uh, human rights activists uh, should look into these uh, realities and uh, suggest measures to the government to have, you know, a kind of policies that would be uh, beneficial to all the communities as well as the uh, the states in the northeastern region as a whole. That is my suggestion. But Bichesh, you know, when we talk about the fallout of the ethnic conflict, there is one more thing which I would like to uh, bring this to the table. And the thing which I would like to bring this to the table is that there is a big debate between illegal immigrant and a refugee. And the difference between an illegal immigrant and a refugee has been politicized to the limit. Do you, do you think that this electoral politics uh, is adding on, you know, sort of a, uh, adding on to the uh, national security situation because identity mobilization by Mizoram Secular Alliance, Mizoram Zerilai Paul, Young Mizor Association, you know, it's, it's, it's pushing the envelope when it comes to the electoral politics of the state, which is right now 
divided between the MNF and the Congress party. Well, it is it, it is Karthike because you know I uh, though I you know agree with most of the things uh, which has been said by Mr. Chakma and and uh, you Dr. see none of the Mizoram uh, MLAs have written this. This has been written and sent to the Home Minister by a Manipur MLA. By a Manipur. See, uh, you know Mizoram has been at the centre of Manipur uh, conflict, uh, especially you know the uh, the kind of angry tweets and the open assertion of uh, how uh, the uh, you know Kokochin uh, community has been. You targeted. remember Zoram Thangma's Ab angry absolutely. tweet? That that is what I'm saying. So I haven't seen any Chief Minister tweeting like absolutely. that. Absolutely, and you know I mean it, it marrying Mr. Biswas Sarma uh, on <laughs> one rare occasion. Yeah, so so it was very clear that you know he was in thick of things as far as you know the migration was there. A lot of lot of Kuki Chin population also fled to Mizoram uh, when the uh, when the intensity of the uh, you recall that photograph? There were ten of them sitting in Aizol when we had the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm? I do, I do. So I'm I'm saying that you know that that. that the government of the day wants to uh, wants to take a holistic security view, and and if the state has agreed initially, uh, then there's no point going back on it. And and you know, give, given the fact that uh, that you know it it, it alters the uh, your ethnic composition, your popular uh, population composition of the particular state, but it also could turn into a security quagmire, which which any uh, country would want to avoid at all cost. And I think you know, I mean, if you're doing biometrics uh, with with the requisite uh, uh, safeguards in position, it is not going to harm their interest that much. And, and there's always, you know, irrespective of how much we claim about, you know, uh, that uh, the process of acquiring Aadhaar card or something like that is very, very uh, stringent and nobody can do it. The reality is, Karthike, forget Northeast, right here in Noida, where we're sitting as studios or base, you can see several people uh, having, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the maids and the people who come up with a different uh, religion, different uh, uh, name, they have Aadhaar cards and all. So, it does create a security uh, security nightmare. I mean, any abuse of uh, or, or othering based on that biometrics is, should definitely be avoided. Uh, but to not do it at, at all, it, at, at this point of time, is a clear indication of... Uh, how, uh, uh, you know, uh, which way uh, Mizo government, Mizoram government is thinking about it. Though the government of India has, uh, you know, extended I'll come the to you, Mr. Chakma. I have seen you. I'll come to you. I'll come to you, the, yes, yes, The government uh -huh. of India has extended the date, uh, you know, as per this article to uh, March 31st, 2024. Uh, but I think, you know, I mean, I mean, on both sides, right now, if I, if you ask me, it has a far, it is 70, 80 percent of it is pure electoral uh, connotation and nothing more than that. Pure electoral connotation? Uh, uh, Mr. Bhagat, pure electoral, co you know, connotation, a big spill out, a big spill out, you know, some right now, now people have started to talk about, you know, we, you know, we would hear Nagalem, suddenly in last six months, you know, I haven't heard it before, Greater Mizoram, I mean, I was thinking, did I miss it, you know, when I was doing my studies? See, uh, uh, Karthike, uh, just uh, let me link uh, my uh, intervention with what Suhas has said. Uh, see, as much as religion and caste is a big, big factor in identity politics in the mainland India, ethnicity is the same factor in Northeast India. There is no doubt about that. But having said that, uh, if we do not bring in normativity on ethical discourse into it and only says that the politics should be entirely built on ethnicity uh, as a state of affair that is very sad matter uh, and to uh, represent to paint the entire reason as ethnically you know ba uh, based and the politics just not coming out of ethnicity is not the right way of narrative. Look at the, how Mizoram government, a state of Mizoram from 1986, subsequently came up and their treatment with the minority has been very clear. They do not want uh, anyone outside of the Mizo Jo community to be part of that uh, state. So Chakmas are an example how they had been pushed out. But in case of Manipur, it's true in spite of the fact that Maitais are the majority to an extent. Now there are many colleagues who are saying Maitai population has come down to 43, 44 percent. So I'm not going into the debate of single majority or larger majority. But the point is in the politics of Manipur, right from the inception of Manipur in 1947, after the British left 
and up before we joined India in 1949. If you look at Manipur Darbar, which was constituted in 1948, I mean, the entire act came up. Correct. Was that it was representation of the entire population. Yes, the Maitis were a majority, so their representation is larger, but there were Nagas, there were Mijos, I mean, Kukichin groups, Muslims, and even smaller minorities who do not fall either in the Naga configuration or Kuki configuration. So the fact is, Suhas, that yes, our identities are based on ethnicity, but to say that our politics, a normativity that should guide the politics, uh, we do not think about representation at all uh, for the entire reason is not correct. I think Manipur has been an example, even from 71, if you look at the first chief minister was a Muslim who comes from a small minority Muslim community. Then came the Tankul Nagas. Unfortunately, that has stopped in the last 20 years or so. The Maitais have become chief minister continuously. So there are certain uh, apprehensions among the Maitais about the kind of politics, ethnicization, ethnic politics, linking with the electoral politics has come up. And maybe the Maitis are also getting a little guarded. But having said that, having said that, even if you, many of you may not like with the chief minister, and I also have my own apprehension the way he handled the matter. But if you listen to him, Biren Singh, he has been telling that, see, the government is not against the entire cookie. Cookies are part of the entire body politics of Manipur, but we are against the recent illegal migrants who have come from Myanmar and Correct. Bangladesh. Correct, absolutely. So that has to be differentiated. Nobody in Manipur is saying that cookies are entirely migrant. If they you are know, there, Mr. Bhagat, I have, you, you know, know one thing which I say, I am against those. you know, it's illegal migrants. Europe has a problem of illegal migrants. You know, India yes. has a, a you know problem of illegal migrants. America has a problem of illegal migrants. No one says that the American government is intolerant. No one says that the Italians are intolerant. No one says that the That's Spanish are intolerant. Yeah. Only Indian government becomes intolerant when it says, boss, you know, you are an illegal migrant. Or, you know, we can't take more people. We are already a populist country. So why that burden has to be posited when it comes to India? Mr. Chakma, you wanted to come in? Straight to you. I think there are a couple of issues. First of all, I think... The instruction which was issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs for biometric identification was not a serious one. It was to assuage the sentiment of the majority mages which we are having with respect to illegal immigrants or you know influxes from Myanmar. Otherwise, this is not the time you actually collect biometric data because you yourself are not being able to move around. So that's one part. The second part is, it is a fact that, you know, there are people who are coming from Myanmar and it has not been denied. But to say that, you know, cookies are also coming from Bangladesh, that's absolutely untrue. The entire cookie population in the Chittagong tracks is about 10,000 people at this point of time. And Chak must know because they flow, follow closely what is happening. So, I mean, it's... You know, I mean, the, the, from the Chittagong Hill tracks all the way crossing, uh, uh, you know, Mizoram, then they reach to uh, uh, Manipur. It's 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 a bit far fetched because, after all, you know, ten thousand population of the entire community in Bangladesh. So they are not a majority community. And what I was trying to say when I talk about ethnicity, I have seen uh, uh, that killings took place in Bodoland from 1990s, one after the other, when they tried to build Bodo-dominated, Bodo-territorial council. And if you look at the each major community in the Northeast, the focus remains outsider. Even if they are citizens, they are outside. For example, you know, Chakmas were settled in Nachal Pradesh in 1964. Imagine from Bangladesh, they had to cross to Mizoram, then Assam, then they were taken away there. 60 years later, they will still not accept them. And the same goes for Mizoram government. 
if 60,000 population had come from okay. Chirgaon Hill to excite the Bangladesh, there would, would have been riots in the Chakmas. Chakmas are not being targeted because there is no influx from that side. Okay. And, and the last point which I want to talk about in Manipur, if there was no constitutional bar for the Maites to settle in the hill areas, the situation would have been completely different. We like or not because of the hill council Mr. areas. Mr. Chakma, you, have, you, you, know, you have hit at the mood point the land should be reorganized. You know, the basic, basic issue in the Manipur is also about land, the right to settle. You know, in the sort of the, the hundreds of debates I have done, this matter has come up again and again. I really don't want to get into ad nauseum 10%, 80%. I don't want to talk about it. But the fact of the matter is land is an issue. I understand that the land is an issue because the population has gone up. And the population goes up, demography changes, you have migration, people go in, go out, and suddenly the majority has a minority complex and the minority feels that, you know, majority is ma being majoritarian just because they're higher in number, which is against a false narrative. So I think uh, the today's basic issue here was, Bajesh, that, you know, Manipur as a, as a, as a state is having a bearing which a lot of people are failing to understand uh, in the other parts of the country. And I thought that the best example was to take up the issue of Mizoram. Imagine how identity politics have become center stage. I covered elections in Mizoram in 2003. I was stationed in Aizol for uh, a month and subsequently when uh, the uh, anti North India riots took place. I was shifted. I was in a different TV channel to Gauhati, and uh, I, I, I still remember ID Swami and uh, another gentleman who was also the Home, home Minister Chinmaya Swami. Chinmaya Swami. Chin, Chinmaya Swami. There were two uh, uh, Home Ministers of State under uh, Lal Krishna Advani. So. Uh, from the day when the issue about was local and I did stories that the Mizoram elections is about local stories, they don't work on Sunday, it is about water, it is about individual campaign, you know, the, you know, you go to the women's uh, market, you know, you, you, you do hyper local stories. Today, 20 years down the line, this is 2023, I am doing a story on the, the sort of ethnic mobilization or the politics of uh, uh, ethnicity which has become more pronounced, it has been pronounced become more pronounced because of the Manipur conflict and the, the sort of bearing it is uh, having is visible. I don't know what sort of impact it will have in future when it comes to Meghalaya or sort of impact with when it will come to Assam, but there are some disturbing trends. We had the visuals even on the borders, people with boys or bow, you know, bow and arrow fought each other. We showed that story. So, you know, today's story, today's story about Manipur is a stark example that the idea of Indian citizenship is plural, it cannot be identity centric, that's the beauty of the Indian constitution and it is a responsibility of the people also to support and do that sort of a politics in which ethnicity, religion and caste, I must say because we have been doing a lot of things on caste debate should not be to the central to the idea of an Indian citizen because that's what make India very very different but yes, uh, Manipur conflict in context of ethnicity, it sadly has affected the neighboring state. Literally every major power in the world is gearing up with its own digital currency. And so is India. But India.